so, so we have seen the meaning of a rank of a matrix and the inverse of the matrix in the last lecture. Today I will be talking about eigenvalues, eigenvectors of a matrix. Okay. And I want to emphasize that this is probably one of the most important areas of linear algebra to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices and it is used in all branches of science and engineering. Okay. So, let us get to the discussion of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In order to do this, we will restrict our discussion to square matrices only and that is where eigenvalues and eigenvectors are defined. And uh, in order to do this, we will just mention that uh, it helps to think of, of a matrix in terms of operation on a vector. on a vector. So, for example, you could have a matrix A and that operates on a vector x okay. and when this matrix operates on a vector, it will give you another vector. So, I will just call that vector y. Okay. So, uh, a matrix operates on a vector to give you another vector and now we say what is the re relation between x and y. What is the relation between x and y? Is there any relation between x and y? In general, x and y they can be completely different vectors. Okay. Now, so for a matrix, now we ask the question is, is there some vector, I will call it x lambda, such that, such that uh, matrix A preserves the direction of x lambda. Okay. So, the question we are asking is, is there some vector x lambda such that the matrix A preserves the direction of x lambda. That means, what, what we mean to ask is, is there a matrix and I will use a different color for this because this is an important equation. So, is there a matrix, is, so for the same matrix A, when it acts on this particular vector x lambda, okay, it gives you something that is proportional to x lambda. It gives you a vector that is actually proportional and this constant of proportionality, I will call it as lambda. Okay. So, lambda is the constant of proportionality. This is a, this is a scalar or a real number. Real number if you are dealing with real matrices. Okay. Now, the question is, uh, we, are, we are saying that uh, for, for any given matrix A, there can be certain vectors x lambda such that when A operates on x lambda, it gives, it gives a vector that is proportional to x lambda. So, in other words, this is proportional to x lambda. Okay. So, so if this is a case, then uh, this equation is called an eigenvalue equation. This is refers to as an eigenvalue equation. And uh, what we say is that x lambda is an eigen vector of A of matrix A with eigen value lambda. Okay. It is very important to get, get the sense uh, of, of the statement. What we mean is that uh, x lambda is an eigenvector of the matrix A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. Okay. So, uh, it is not that you cannot generally define eigenvectors and eigenvalues, you have to talk in reference to a particular matrix. Okay. And uh, always uh, for a given matrix, there can be many eigenvectors and many I and corresponding eigenvalues. So, it need not be unique. Okay. So now, 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 how do we how do we solve for eigenvalues? So what we said is that uh, we just mentioned that uh, this equation is called the eigenvalue equation, and uh, in general, for a matrix there can be more than one eigenvalue. 
okay then there can be more than one eigenvector and uh, we'll just go ahead and try to see what you need to do to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors okay so what we'll do is we'll start with this equation we'll write uh, ax equal to lambda x and uh, what we'll say is that that implies a minus lambda times identity times x equal to 0 vector okay so what i did is i just took the lambda to the left i multiplied it by identity so that i get a matrix and this is a minus lambda i x equal to 0 so it's the same as the above equation i just rewrote it in a slightly different form but uh, the advantage of writing in this form is that now looks like a set of linear homogeneous equations okay if you remember this looks exactly like your uh, like your set of linear equations where you had where you had uh, where you had uh, something like uh, you know ax equal to b we had this was the general linear linear system that we had okay now in this case what you have is something like ax equal to 0 so what we have is a uh, so 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 this kind of equation is called a homogeneous equation okay so you have some matrix a instead of a i have a minus lambda i in this case okay but when it operates on x you get the zero vector that means my system of equations looks like this so if my a has the usual if you use the the explicit notation for a then you have a11 and then you have minus lambda times i so ident identity matrix just has one along the diagonals so lambda times identity will just have lambda along the diagonals and you are subtracting that from a so what you'll get is you'll get you'll get a subtraction of lambda from the diagonals and the off diagonal elements will have no change so it will a12 a13 and so on up to a1n if it's an n by n matrix and so on so you have a21 now we'll have a22 minus lambda a23 a2n and an1 an2 an3 ann minus lambda okay so this is the matrix and what you have is this multiplied by x x x is a ve vector i'll just give it some coefficients x1 x2 up to xn this equal to 0 i should explain what this 0 is so 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 this is your zero vector which is basically a vector with all elements 0 it's an so this is a column vector n dimensional column vector all all elements are zero this is an n dimensional column vector that is your x okay and this is a matrix where you have along the diagonals you have a11 minus lambda what you are doing is you want to solve the set of equations okay now the nice thing about uh, this is a set of homogeneous equations okay now uh, in order for them to be consistent in order for them to be consistent and solution to exist so in order for solution to exist we must have determinant of this matrix determinant of this matrix that is determinant of a minus lambda i that is that is actually this matrix this whole matrix so the determinant of this matrix should be equal to 0 okay only if the determinant of this matrix equal to 0 can we have solutions of this problem okay so so uh, notice notice now we just come back to the eigenvalue equation for a minute this equation this eigenvalue equation now uh, what we are going to do is we are going to take this equation and solve for both uh, x and lambda and we solve for x and lambda okay with the same equation okay you are going to solve for both x and lambda now when you set the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 okay then uh, you will get a polynomial equation for lambda so this is a 
polynomial equation for lambda. And we will see an example of this in a minute. Okay. And, uh, and you can see just by looking at the product along the diagonals, you can see that see that you will have lambda raised to n power coming in this determinant. So, this determinant will contain a term that, uh, that has lambda raised to n. So, it is an nth order polynomial equation okay. and in general you will have uh, you will have n, n roots. Okay. So, that means the number of eigenvalues is equal to the dimension of the matrix. Okay, so, you have n eigenvalues for this equation. Okay. So, now next is uh, we will just next is you want to take those eigenvalues and solve for the eigenvectors. Okay. So, as we said as we said earlier our goal is to determine both the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Okay. So, uh, so corresponding to an eigenvalue lambda okay, uh, I am I should may mention that here I have not put x lambda explicitly because I am using all these uh, uh, subscripts on x, okay. but if you want you can put an x lambda, okay. it is just a notation. Now, uh, when you solve for the eigenvalue coefficients, you, how will you solve for these eigenvalue coefficients? So, so, again you go back to our equation, you say you had you had a times x equal to lambda x okay. and this implies a minus lambda i x equal to 0. Now, we choose one value of lambda of lambda and solve for corresponding x. What I mean is if you if you choose a value of lambda then this determinant is this this matrix a minus lambda i is well defined. So, you have a 1 1 minus lambda a 1 3 and so on up to a 1 n and uh, a 2 1 a 2 2 minus lambda a 2 3 a 2 n a n 1 n 2 n 3 a n n minus lambda. This is your a minus lambda i and then you have the coefficients of x which I will have x 1, x 2 up to x n. These are the these are the these are the coefficients of the x vector and this should be equal to 0. So, so to do is to solve for x 1, x 2 up to x n. Note that uh, that uh, where the determinant of this matrix equal to 0 implies okay, is these equations are actually dependent equations. Okay. That means, rank of a minus lambda i is less than n. Okay, that means the rank of this matrix is less than n, and uh, that basically implies that uh, that uh, you know cannot. So this implies that you cannot determine all x1, x2, etc. up to xn uniquely. So there is no unique choice of these x1, x2 up to xn. Okay. In fact, in fact, typically what we do is we, we, we take one of them to some number and you express all of them in terms of that in, in terms of that uh, single coefficient. Okay. So, so we will see an example of how to do this, but the point is you should keep in mind that whenever you have uh, eigenvalues, okay, uh, eigenvectors, you cannot determine the eigenvector uniquely. And there is another reason for this and I will just mention this right here, okay, it is fairly fairly easy to see. I will also mention that you can solve for these eigenvector coefficients using row operations okay, and we will see an example of that. But uh, before that I just want to mention that uh, suppose we have a x equal to lambda x okay, and y equal to c times x 
okay, y is a constant times x, okay, then a y is equal to, you can see easily this is uh, a times c x, okay, now c is just a scalar, so, so you can take it to the left of the matrix and so, and so I can write this as c times a x and a x is nothing but lambda x. So, I can write this, I can write this as c times lambda x or I can write this as lambda times c x or I can write this as lambda times y, okay. So, what I have is that this implies that a y equal to lambda y, okay. So, so what this implies is that uh, if x is an eigenvector of a with eigenvalue lambda, then, then y equal to some constant times x is also an eigenvector of a and it is not just it is an eigenvector of a with same eigenvalue lambda, okay. So, that means if you have an eigenvector then you can just multiply it by a constant you will get another eigenvector with the same eigenvalue, okay. And that is why we say that eigenvectors cannot be determined uniquely by this procedure. Okay. So, so, so eigenvectors are not unique, you can take any eigenvector, multiply it by a scalar, you will get another eigenvector with the same eigenvalue, okay. So, now let us, uh, I will just mention uh, one thing before we take an example. So, what is the significance of eigenvectors, okay. So, you can think of eigenvectors as important directions, okay, important directions in, and uh, so what I can think of is suppose I have a vector like this. Okay. So, this is my vector, I am just showing it as an arrow, okay. Now, when I operate it by this matrix A, okay, then I might get some other vector like this, okay. That will in general it will point somewhere in some other direction, it might have a different length also, I will just show it expanded, it might look like this, okay. So, so I, I operate this vector by this matrix A and I get something else, okay. Now, there are you can do this for various vectors and uh, what you will find is that, uh, is that there are certain vectors, I will show this in the, in this light blue color. So, there are certain, I would say direction, certain specific direction, any, any vector uh, pointing in this direction will have the property that when I operate it on it by A, I will get another vector in the same direction and maybe, maybe it is slightly longer or maybe slightly shorter. But whatever it is, they point in the same direction. So, these two are in the same direction. Okay, so this is these two are in the same direction. So this is for eigenvector eigenvectors. So eigenvectors have this property that uh, when they are operated, so 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 eigenvectors really represent some very specific directions. Okay, some very very specific directions such that when the matrix operates on vectors in those pointing in those directions, it will give you another vector pointing in the same direction, okay. And these are, these are, you can think of these as important directions of your, of your system, okay. So, now let us take, uh, uh, I will just, I will just mention this briefly that, uh, that your uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, they, uh, there is another way to think, you can think of your matrix as a representation of some physical quantity in some basis and you know this will be the, this will be an important theme that we will discuss when we are, when we are seeing applications of matrices in quantum mechanics. But first let us do an example, let us do an example of an eigen, eigenvalue eigenvector calculation. And I will take a very simple example just to illustrate what you need to do in order to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, let me take a matrix A that looks like 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, minus 4, 
1, 2, 3 and I ask you to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this. So, calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. Okay. So, to calculate eigenvalues, so we use the secular equation which says that this determinant 1 minus lambda 0, 0, 1, 2 minus lambda minus 4, 1, 2, 3, this determinant has to be equal to 0. Oh, 3 minus lambda. Okay. Now, now what you can do is you can multiply this out. Now, now in this case you have the you have the first row has just one non-zero element. So, so when I multiply this out, I'll get one minus lambda times. I'll get uh, two terms. I'll get uh, two minus lambda into three minus lambda plus two into four is eight. And this has to be equal to 0. So, immediately you can see that uh, lambda equal to 1 will satisfy this. So, one root of this of this cubic equation is lambda equal to 1. So, so, uh, so lambda equal to 1 or now if I just expand this out, I will get uh, lambda square minus phi lambda plus 14 equal to 0. Okay, so and this this implies lambda is equal to five plus minus. So it'll be five plus minus. So what do you have? So you have uh, phi square is to, so square root of five square is twenty five minus. So you have fourteen into four is fifty six divided by two. Okay, so this implies. So, therefore, what you say is lambda equal to 1 or lambda equal to 5 plus root 31 times i, i is the unit imaginary number divided by 2 or lambda equal to 5 minus root 31 i divided by 2. So, these are the 3 roots of this secular equation and these are the 3 eigenvalues. So, so, we have calculated the 3 eigenvalues. Now, what we need to do next is to calculate the eigenvectors. So, I will just take one example. Let us take lambda equal to 1. So, if we take lambda equal to 1, so, so I will calculate the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 1. Okay. So, so, what I do is I take lambda equal to 1 and I put it in my equation. So, what I will get is uh, my equation which, uh, which is shown in uh, over over here. So, what I am going to do is I am going to put lambda equal to 1 in this in the in an equation of this form and what I will get is the, is the following equation. So, I will get I will get 1 minus lambda. Now, lambda is 1. So, I get my equation 1 minus 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, minus 4, 1, 2, 2 this times your eigenvalue or your uh, eigenvector, I will just give it some coefficients x 1, x 2, x 3 and this has to be equal to 0, 0, 0. Okay. And uh, what you can do is you can take uh, let us say you let us say for convenience we will take uh, uh, since since I said now you have only two equations and you have three unknowns. So, you can choose one of the unknowns arbitrarily. So, so let x 3 equal to 1. Okay. So, then what you have is uh, uh, you, you have two equations x 1 plus x 2 minus 4 equal to 0 and x 1 plus 2 x 2 plus 2 equal to 0. Okay. And uh, you can go ahead and you can just uh, subtract this equation. So, what you will get is x 2 equal to minus 6 and x 1 equal to 10. So, my eigenvector corresponding to this is basically given by 10 minus 6 1. So, this is my eigenvector. 
Okay. So, so uh, notice what I had to do is I had to choose one of them arbitrarily. In this case, I just choose chose x3 equal to 1. I could have also chosen x1 equal to 1 or x2 equal to 1. Then I would have got uh, appropriately, I would have got all these other quantities scaled. Okay. So, so basically my eigenvectors are proportional to this 10, 6, 10 minus 6, 1. Okay. Okay. So, now uh, before we conclude this lecture, I just want to say why uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors are very important okay, in quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, uh, the eigenvalue equation is uh, has the following form. So, suppose you have an operator O okay, and, it, uh, and it operates on some state psi, okay, you get lambda times psi. Okay, then you say that, uh, and I will just put a subscript lambda, then you say that uh, this is called an eigenfunction, eigenfunction of the operator O and this is called the eigenvalue. Okay. So, this is a typical eigenvalue equation that you write in quantum mechanics and now uh, if you are using a certain basis to represent your functions, then your, uh, your uh, state functions they look like vectors okay, and your uh, operators look like matrices. Okay. So, uh, so, 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 you can have a, can have operators in quantum mechanics represented as matrices in certain basis. Okay, this is a very important way to think about quantum mechanics. So, in fact, some of the earliest development of quantum mechanics were done using the using matrix algebra. Okay, and once you do that, then uh, then the significance of eigenvalues uh, uh, then uh, eigen eigenvalues represent uh, observed values and eigen eigenvectors. Okay, these are uh, these are again these are specific vectors or directions. Or in this case, you can also think of them as functions. Okay, so there is a there is a very uh, natural use of eigenvalues and eigenvectors in quantum mechanics.